Thomas Hacker. I'm from Festus, Missouri. I'm a part-time bladesmith, so I, I make a lot of uh, outdoor and kitchen knives, and I got started about five years ago. Here's a little like neck knife that I did. Here's my logo right here. It's just my initials TH, so Thomas Hacker. So making a knife is a very long and uh, difficult process. So I start off with uh, raw materials where I will either forge weld pieces together and hammer it into the shape that I want. I will then take it to a grinder and clean it up, put some holes in it. And from that process, I will heat treat the blade to get the hardness that I want. I will then finish uh, polishing everything, attach a handle, uh, shape and polish the handle, and then I will sharpen the blade. So here's a bar that I forge welded that I still have to forge out into what I want. But I took a piece of high carbon steel in the center and I have wrought iron on the sides. Now if you've ever seen wrought iron, uh, when you etch it, it looks like all these strands like grains of wood. So this bar here is going to be turned into at least two chef's knives and I might make uh, some other stuff from it. but. This here is going to be some kitchen knives. So I got started making knives because I really just wanted a really good uh, hunting knife and couldn't find one. So I saw some people on YouTube making them with hand tools and then I start, started seeing people forging them and I just tried making my own and from then on I've just tried to constantly make them better uh, as I go. So this is my forge. Uh, this is called a ribbon burner forge. So it has a blower here that mixes with propane and it'll come through one burner and then it swirls around in the center and gets to about 2400 or 2500 degrees. So that's how I heat my steel. When I do heat my steel, um, I will do a combination of hammering it on the anvil by hand and then I also have a hydraulic forging press that uh, does a little bit of the work for me, but still mostly by hand. Here's a bandsaw just for uh, wood and softer materials. Uh, this is my belt grinder. This was an expensive piece of equipment, but it's variable speed and goes uh, horizontally. I can tilt it for doing different shapes. And this I do probably 90% of my grinding on. So. Um, and then over here is a controller for the speed of the, the motor on that. Here is a smaller belt sander I'll use for a little bit of woodworking with a disc to kind of flatten things out. So this is one of the simpler patterns. Um, what I do is I do alternating steels. I'll do a high carbon, which comes out black, and then a hard ca high carbon steel with a lot of nickel in it, and that'll come out brighter. And I alternate those and I'll fold them and forge weld them until I get the amount of layers that I want. And here I just cut grooves into it and then I forged it flat and I came out with a ladder pattern. So the show I was on called Forged in Fire, um, they start you off with some kind of crazy challenge that knife makers don't normally do. So what I had to do, I had to use pieces from a drum set to, to make a knife. Um, and that went okay, you know, I, I got it done. And then the final task, I had to come home and make a weapon from history. Um, I had to make a Spanish sword called the Tizona of El Cid. They let me keep the sword because I didn't win. I came in second place because my sword wasn't as pretty because I messed things up. But here's my sword. Um, I forged this from a leaf spring from a car. And it actually functioned really, really well. It didn't bend or break or anything like that. It did get a tiny bit of edge damage, but with bladesmithing, there are a lot of processes that can go wrong. Um, especially, I specialize in forge welding multiple layers of steel together. And a lot of times those layers can split apart in many different steps of the process. So that can be the most difficult thing is 
making sure everything's perfect all the way through from start to finish. So the, the main difference between a handmade knife and a mass produced knife is just the level of quality. So for example, a mass produced knife, the handle isn't going to fit nearly as well as a custom knife. Um, there's going to be little ridges and bumps and it's just not going to fit like it should. Uh, with a custom knife, the geometry is typically going to be a lot thinner and okay so a, a custom knife is going to have just much more detail in the handle and the way everything fits up the geometry is going to be much more thinner and much more uh, geared towards the speci specific task you're using it for it's going to be a lot sharper um, it's going to be a lot more user-friendly that just again the level of detail and finish is going to be a lot, a lot more different